Hello everyone, welcome back to Potty Mouth Garden Show. Yes, back now, and as you can see, someone's missing. Someone's having a good time, but we're here, Jess, Audrey. We're still gardening away, just kind of. This is the day of gardening. <laughs> Tony, it's up to you today to be the female eye candy. Yes, I, I can do that. I can okay. do that. Yes. You, Audrey, you are, you well? are you well? Are you well? Because I was just mentioning before, you look look sunny there. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 27 Celsius today. And, and then tomorrow ooh. it's going down to 59, which I think is 10 Man. Celsius. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to Michigan. Well, hey! <laughs> yes, it's roller coaster time. Absolutely. And Jess, can you see in the back of Audrey there? She's still got her little glow lights on there. The, 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 oh, the, yeah. yeah, still so <laughs> <laughs> Audrey, are you are you full with your garden now? Is everything and are them just spares or is, is this just Oh no, 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 no. I have a deck table, like it's a ten foot by four foot table packed uh no because we've had we've had a couple weird nights mm -hmm. so i keep holding back on some of the warmer stuff because i know they're gonna get hammered but it seems like now maybe everything can just get out mm -hmm. so this will be a hell of a week of planting so the There'll be no frost. You might have cool nights, but there's definitely no frost. I, I don't think anything's going under uh, 50, again, which I think for you guys is maybe 8. Right. Your, oh, your numbers are so much further apart than ours are, so it kind of, anyway. Um, it's all right. But I, mean... every, I think at this point I'm safe to put everything in the ground. Mm -hmm. So it will be, and yesterday was Mother's Day here. And so my youngest daughter and her fiance came over and did a lot of weeding for me. Oh, so that I was, was like, nice. That oh. was the best gift ever. I said, I don't need one more thing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to weed, oh my yeah. goodness, here's gloves, here's a, you know, whatever you need. Well, I got just, it. When when everybody went and came to my allotment last year, honestly, oh. that your little it's just amazing when you can see all these weeds just go I, within and like, I almost started crying because I oh, thought man, just look. do you know how long that would take? Oh it's so oh, even it in was, beds. Do you know what I mean? When you when you can think yes. right now, do two beds today, two beds tomorrow, but it just woof, it was gone, done. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So I was I was like yes. so happy. Oh yes, yeah, definitely. so happy. So it was lovely. Jess, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Jesse, I just want to go wait. I'm gonna do well done, Jess. But you're going to get the, the award of the year for the journal app, for mentioning the journal app. Ah. On, oh, what? Honestly, I'm not I, I'm not faking it or anything. Like I'm shocking at taking notes. Like, Steve, yep. write it in a book. Write, no, no, I'm not going to write in a book, man. I even struggle writing on labels. Yeah. But the journal app, I'm always taking photographs. Do you know what I mean? So you can just correlate. Oh, right, right. Planted tomato pot, and it just works yeah. so good. And I'm just keeping it for for garden and stuff. Yeah, nothing else. That's uh -huh. what I've done as well. Yeah. So it's honestly just I would yeah. never have thought of that because when it I remember it getting released, and I was thinking, Jim, what do I want to like today? I got to the uh, today I had three coffees and a coke. You know what I mean? And I was thinking, but I never even thought of just gardening, and. Again, just pictures and a, and a quick sentence, and then new entry. So today I've, I've been planting cabbages outside. So then cabbages, new entry, beetroot, new entry, and it just everything is just there. And it's just yeah, so simple. Yeah, <laughs> just like, but like lovely because it's all kept to one side where it doesn't get in. So if anyone's got the, or even you could use, I guess, any journal and app on any you know on Android device as well, but on the. Apple's got their own one out there and it just works lovely. So I'm now obsessed with like entries into me journal app. Fantastic. Yeah, so well done. Is... Thank you very much for that. Yeah, that's great to look back on next year. Well, Audrey, that's it. Do right. you know what I mean? Because it's like every date, every entry is a date. So right. when you put out your, your beetroot or anything like that, you know, you put, you know, did it die? Did it? Did it? I'll mention yeah. that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, so awesome. good, Jess. Anyways, apart from picking up your award of the year for best tip, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Are you good? Are you well? Are you good? Yeah. I haven't seen you for a. You're good. Everything... Yeah, really good. Absolutely, been loving the weather. 
Um, it's a bit overcast today here, but other than that, it has been oh, it's been bliss for a whole week practically. Just well, gorgeous. Yeah, we've had it, but but I was just saying, Audrey, Jess, we've had it, but I've been working in the polytunnel and it's been cooking. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It kind of knocked us for six one day, and it was just like it, it knocked us the whole day. So, have have you got chilies? Up in polytunnels because I haven't seen videos. I haven't seen you, so are we? St- are we still got chilies down home? On yeah, chilies, chilies are still here. Um, but I've kind of been messing around with them a bit and changed the water and given them a feed. And like movement is happening; they are kind of starting to take off, which is a bit of a relief. But I don't have the cover on the polytunnel yet right um but like i was just saying i've been working in the polytunnel too but considering it's got no cover on it it hasn't been that hot (laughs) it's just been like working inside a frame um but yeah kind of getting the floor done for that and uh i mean i'm quite lucky that i haven't been the pressure to get the chilies in um looking at the bright side of having pants plants (laughs) because i haven't got the polytunnel up and up and running yet so so have you still kept the the compost in or have you changed the compost or have you just added a little bit of feed to that compost um but the chilies are in the pots yes do you know what i actually pulled all the compost away from them and potted them up again still into the same compost like right. um uh what's i've forgotten the name of it silver, silver like still, <laughs> just because that's the one that i've got and it's the one i've got easy access to um But what had happened is it it got really, really waterlogged. So I've been watering from the bottom, you know, like you're supposed to. But what seems to be happening is, um, you know, I said that some of the, when I opened my new bag of Silver Grow the other day, I was was like this, well, in the video I said it anyway, and the texture of it was like, oh, yeah, that's what it used to be like. And I've had a couple of bags, not really realised it, where it's been a bit more woody. And I think what's been happening inside these pots, because I've been watering from the bottom, is that they've got incredibly waterlogged at the bottom of the pot. Right. The water's not carrying up the compost because it's too loose, like it's too woody. So these these every time, you know, when you pick your pot up to see if it needs watering or not, because you can feel from the weight, like they're really heavy. And yet the top of them, when I pulled them out, they were just absolutely bone dry. So oh. I've kind of I didn't have any vermiculite or perlite or anything mixed in with it. So I've done a bit more of a mix with with vermiculite, put a bit of feed in there, potted them up, and they seem right. to be much happier. And how how big are they? I, I, I'm, I'm doing one hand. Can I can I now go no, to two no, hands? No, it's definitely still on the one hand. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> but I would say rather than being like this with one leaf on right. top, they're now like this. Well, so that's, big uh, improvement, uh-huh. yeah. Well, mind you, my um, birch loga ones, Jess, are oh, that kind of, you know, but I've put them in those, you know, the, the chili quad, the chili grows, I think they're called, which are a smaller yeah. quad grow, and they look fine in there, you know what I mean? So hopefully the yeah. season will, you know, get them away there. But nice to know then it's things are working. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and I, I never. It was a woody mix, but mine was like nice. It was a lovely texture that silver grow, but it didn't seem to. And I've just today, just put like a, some beetroot that I'd kind of sown just a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and the one that I sown in the, and it's just like, you know, well, there's actually only about two or three survived now in the in the in the silver grow where the really. The, the other one is just like every pot's got like seven or you know like multi sones away so yeah mm. but that's a peat is peat is it yeah mm-hmm. yeah it says on the packet professional um i don't know what it is professional nurseries uh, like product and i was like well that's me professional <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like cheating to be honest you know what i mean so yeah i think i've got what is it 20 30 or something like the public because i think apparently nurseries can keep on using it for a while yet but i think the public would peat can a little while but you know i tried um i was thinking that i was going to do a bit of an experiment with this because after we talked about this a couple of weeks ago and you were saying that you're going back to mm-hmm. is it clover that you use normally yes. Yes. yeah um i went looking for a small bag of compost with peat in it um 
just because I thought, well, if I buy a small bag, I'll do a bit of a test, you know, pop mm-hmm. a couple of things up and just see how much of a difference there is. I went to Sheen Garden Centre, the Big Squires in um, the other side of Twickenham. I went to the Big B&Q near me and there was another garden centre. Oh, um, Hilliers at Scion uh, right. Park. Big garden centres. I couldn't find any compost with peat in it. Oh, I know. In any I know. of them. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, where I go, it's almost like as if you're dealing in, dealing in narcotics. Do you know what I mean? It, it's round the back, right? Here, I'll get I'll get you a couple of bags, lad. Just hang on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> kind of so but I, I, know, I did. I was I was embarrassed about it, and I I sent <laughs> mum in to ask. I'm looking at all these bags, and it's like, no, it's peat free, peat free. Normally, I would be like looking at that, going, yes, this is fantastic. Everything is peat free. And now I'm like, I'm desperate for some peat just to have a go. You know, I, I didn't want to ask anybody. So I sent mum in there to like to ask the dirty question. And like... <laughs> Mum's always still go, Mum, I go as far as will you? But no, well, I've noticed it in one of my garden centres, but it's just like part of part of the the like the, the this bag of mix. It's like a part of the recipe where the stuff I'm using, this clover, is just peat. Oh, it's just pure peat. Just pure peat. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so wow. that really is the dark side. My goodness. Oh, no, I'm, I'm right in That's there. Like I'm Veda. I'm Veda. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so you guys can't buy peat right now, or apparently you well, can't totally if you buy can. clover. So you know, Audrey. So you know. Do you want? You go, I'll send you a couple of bags, girl. Lass, hey, don't worry well, about no, it. No, we we can still <laughs> buy bags of peat. Oh. Like, oh, you can still, yeah. I mean, it's just. I think. Every garden center has jumped on this, like the the no peat, no peat, you know I mean? sure. peat free, yeah. and some are good. It's coming. You know what I mean? it's coming. Either I mean, it's just coming. It's yeah. I, well, like, so, I, that's what I was saying. I think it's is it twenty thirty when it's banned to the public, but I think nurseries have got it for a lot longer. I'm sure Steve was mentioning that. You know, when mm-hmm. when he was on, and I'm I've, like, been, I've been tempted this year to buy some some of these bags of peat that are still available and stockpile them a little bit because mm. they're they're compressed cubes so you buy this oh. thing and then once you add water to it it becomes like 10 times the size yeah so i thought wow if i just stashed a few of those well it's funny audrey because when i've been doing like the chilies in you know in all our bags over here it says like with the clover anyways it's 100 liters or eight or seven sorry 75 liters so that does that give Manufacturers a bit of wiggle room because I can squash seventy five liters probably into say a good big bucket. Do you know what I mean? So how many you know like weight to lit to liters physical size? I'm yeah. They right. normally it normally has written under it uh, when filled, right? Or at point of fill, right? You know? So there is some kind of guidance we've got well, on it's our like side. Weight be versus volume, off. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neither of which would be a reliable way of judging it because Not obviously if it gets wet, it's going to yeah. be. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, Jess, anything going on then? When is the cover going on? Have you, you've bought the cover, haven't you? Is that... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I bought the cover before I ripped the old one off. That's right. I... Just to like, you know, G me or like give me a bit of confidence about mm-hmm. ripping the old one off because it was pretty painful like sticking that knife in and just like cutting it um but yeah we've just been umming and ahhing really about what to do with the with the base and how extreme to go because the dry it needs to be able to let the water through to put the rats off because the rats like it when it's really dry but it needs to also not be able to get rats and tree roots come through. And if it was really dry, maybe the tree roots wouldn't come through. So just been kind of weighing up. None of them, none of it's going to be exactly the right option. It's just trying to f- find out which is like going to be the better of better of them. How long, how long, what's it now? It's, it's 13th of May. How long are you giving yourself? Is it really? Oh I know, I know. <laughs> how, how long are you giving yourself, Jess, before it's like... It's got it. It's going to be too late. Well, it, I mean, no, it has to be. It has to be ready for me to put the tomatoes out. Like that's the main. Obviously, we've got the greenhouse, so there's there's a halfway house for things. Um, but it has to be ready for tomatoes. My tomatoes are currently looking really good, but they're only about this sort of height. Right. So I've got 
at least two weeks before they need to before they need to go in and that's my major project for this week is to um paint up the frame get that floor down and then right then get the soil in and just i'm just interested though just will you be having like a gang round there to put the plastic on is it will it be just you and your mum yeah, just mum and I, as long as we do it on a not windy day, it's uh-huh. pretty easy. It's just like wrapping a present because it's not, it's not like the, um, the, the, you know, the caterpillar tunnels. Yes. Uh, because it's square. <laughs> and caterpillar you the... tunnel. Good. You're a professional. <laughs> you know what I mean, the though. Caterpillar tunnels. <laughs> Uh, because the way that the plastic is held down is with like a skirting board on the outside. Right. You take the skirting board and then you start at one edge. You can staple it all up and then put the skirting board on and it's held and then you can kind of really pull back. You don't have to tension it. So with two people, it's not it's not a difficult task. Well, I was uh, we've just bought some planters for outside to actually grow tomatoes down here. And just when you mentioned staple, I put some membrane in these planters mm. and used the Bosch staple gun. <gasps> Oh, man, you know what I mean? It's just like the toy for like polytunnels and like, yeah. do, 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 do. and it's just like, it's, you know, instead of like a gun, this thing you just touch against the wood and it was just like, yeah, oh, man, lovely, lovely. So that's happening within two weeks. Yeah. And is it in within two weeks the tomatoes will be going up as well? Or have you got like yeah, another? I so. I mean, if this weather doesn't take a massive dive. They'll be ready to go in in like three weeks' uh-huh. time, won't they? Like before. Well, I would have thought before I'm the end sooner, of the month. To be honest, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, mm, eat well. We will. We will keep abreast of that and see what's happening. Audrey, I, tomatoes. Did you see you? You've got some out. Are you? You're starting to put some out, or I'm uh, hardening some off. And there's another tree in here that needs to go out later today. So I think this week we're going to get a lot of them in. Right. Yeah. And the peppers, mine are kind of between how um, Jesse's used to be and how they are now. I have never had peppers take so long to grow. So I'm I'm dumbfounded with what's going mm, on with those. Mind you, that's a... We've got our own problems, but it's like Audrey's kind of tapping along as well, just to be a part of the gang. Because, you know but I'm I mean? not. That's why I, I want to go. Please separate me. <laughs> I would like big, healthy peppers. Yeah, I've never had a problem, and they're like they're laughable. So weird, I can't put it? them out in a 27 degree heat. They'll they'll just shrivel up and die. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do something drastic with them this week. I found off one someone on on Discord. Actually, it was I think John who came up to the the allotment and tidied up for us. He mentioned that there's a certain date on your bag, and especially on Silver Grow as well. Now my bags were, I guess, made or put together in June 2023. So I don't know if it, mine were like old bags, you know, where things have just like, you know, nutrients have. have my, I grow Could my seed be? starting mix is just cocoa core. Right. I mean, I don't think that goes bad. Uh huh. I mean, it's essentially a sterile mix. But then, so where is it getting? Once it's germinated, Audrey, then where where you, are you feeding that as well after it's germ? Because it'll germinate. I did give it a little feed because I was getting kind of concerned. Right. But that gave them like a little boop, and then that was it. But now right. I've seen more leaves coming on. But I'm like, take your sweet time it <laughs> yeah. is yeah so i'm i've got to do something drastic with them this week because it's i'm just looking at my the, my bag that i've got in here um that was the bag that i did sew the chilies into so it was the the bag that hasn't hasn't been necessarily the best and it is <laughs> what is it august 23 um, right well mine was may 23 if i'm thinking back there now may so but to me though i mean i even May 23 is not that old when I was sewn in February. Do you no. know? Because I was, we were sewn, so no, it was only like not, a few months. That's not you know. old at all. I know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I don't think it's what I planted them in. I don't know. I think it's the juju I'm getting from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We need, we need uh, JB sucked out all the pepper luck for the year. 
he d- he needed to share it around mm-hmm, a bit more. Mm-hmm. I mean, he I don't know what it was. Just, that was just like such a curveball. GBs were just. I remember when he first showed that plant, and I, mine were like tiny, and his. You know what I mean? It was just the first the, time he when he them. showed those. Uh-huh. Like that, mine are nowhere near that big now, and that was in blooming March. He was showing them, wasn't uh-huh. it? But he planted yeah. them like January first. Well, we all did, Audrey. I think we all were oh. kind of in that ballpark. You know what we I mean? We didn't. So, no, <laughs> I didn't. Oops, sorry. Can you hear that? Because mine always, <laughs> mine always grow too quickly. Right. So I, I thought, <laughs> oh my god, if I plant them January first, I'm going to have trees in the house. Mm-hmm. So I didn't plant them till March. Well, what I am so, going to do, mind you, is even is it's it's definitely February next year. Do you know what I mean it? It didn't need to be even when the, like a slow start. Yeah, it didn't need to be. You know, mine mine are in pots there now. I don't know the video is coming out later the, today. There, so every, my polytunnel's finished, set, Ooh. done, and Jess, Audrey, I've got my sweet potatoes are in as well. Ah, oh. wow. yes, the came actually the came go well, being away for a seven days or something. So they were there. And I was thinking when I, when I landed, I was like, I wonder what they Oh, this got to be bloody sweet potato. So straight up there, I got it. I don't know if I've done it right, Jess, Audrey. I've done it a 60 litre pot with homemade compost. And I put two slips in the middle. And then I've got a tray on the bottom, just in case we go away again, that I can kind of fill with water for a little few days. And I've they're in the polytunnel. And then I, I didn't want loads, so I've, but I've got, a, I think there's three more I've just stuck in the ground outside, which I'm not even bothered about. But so yeah. it's the ones in the polytunnel that 60, because it's at this moment, it seems dwarfed in this pot. Yeah. But they grow really fast. They, right. They've got a, they've got a <clears throat> bit of a um, little bit of a bindweed look about them. You know, they really do sprawl right. and tangle over everything. So you might have to just keep, trimming trimming away the tops you know because they will get in amongst right. everything else but yeah yeah that sounds perfect oh well well that, that'll do we'll see um, as soon as you mentioned them i was like oh that'd be nice to, again to contain them in pots do you know what i mean that was the the, the nice thing is if i can keen to keep it in a, a pot that would be oh. nice is have, have you got yours done planted soon are you doing any or jess yeah i've got two plants um, <coughs> what are they called? Can't Mine remember. Were orange, something orange. Was it errato orange? Y- yes. yes. Yeah, I've got errato purple, and might be might be Oregon. Can't remember. I thought it was the Beauregard one, but it wasn't. Um, so are they are they planted then? Have we got them? So I bought them in pots, so they're already in a in a pot this sort of size. Right. Just, uh, I think there's two slips in each in each pot, um, and I'll just put one of those in each of the big, like sixty liter pots, like you say. All right. So it'll so work I... out the same as yours. Just two two slips in there. Right. Oh, so is two not too much? Is is two okay for a sixty? Because, like I say, the the smallest plants, and I was thinking, is that too many plants going in this one huge? Oh, they'll pot? get enormous. They will get enormous. Right. They'll get huge. Oh right. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we, hey, you're talking to this guy, and that's kind of kill, no, kill they, it with just looking at it. You know, what I mean? don't so. think they care who's gardening it. They're just huge plants. Do they? You know, when they said the the goal was like a vine, do they do they drop down roots everywhere they they touch the soil? Do they? At every node, right? If they are like on the soil. Yes. Yeah, they will. And you would get to you'd get potatoes from that, depending on when they put the root down. I mean, right. it all has to develop, right? But mm-hmm. yeah. So if you let them sprawl over ground, you will have all kinds of potatoes. Right, right. Well, we'll know yeah. that they'll be contained in a bucket on, on in my polytunnel floor. So hopefully, oh. well, is, is yours going out, Audrey? Is it too early for you? With it's still a little um, early because they just like it hot, hot, hot. So right. I. I wait till the nights are consistently like 60 or above, which for us is, what is it? I think 50 is 10. So maybe that's 12, 13 for you. Right. Um, Because I, they just know they don't like, they don't like cold at all. And I'll probably put about seven out, I think. So. 
Right. We'll see oh, how that well, goes. Cool, but yeah. I mean, I've I've checked the weather. I keep banging this bloody mic, and we seem to be good. You know, for ten days at least. You know what I mean? Like yeah. over yeah, the twelve. So. Like but you're in the, they're in the polytunnel for you. You're not going to mm-hmm. have to worry. Yeah. Yeah, you got heat. That's like a heat generator in there. Yeah, so right. wait, knock me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jessa, would you put yours in the in the tunnel? Are you because you're Southern, you you tropical, you know, balmy southern down there. Would you just keep no, yours they're, out? No, they're going to go. They're going to go in pots in the greenhouse. Right. Yeah. How, how I, many? I wouldn't trust them outdoors. I think if I mean I, I was saying last time that if we had a really stunning summer, you know, that got really hot and stayed hot mm-hmm. consistently, I think you would be able to grow them outside here, no worries. But we've had a couple of damp squib summers recently, and I yeah, I'll just put them in the poly tunnel. Right. Right. Yeah. Anything else with our gardens before we move on? Anything any anything happening with you, uh, Audrey? Are you is this anything what's gotta be done like this week or Oh, this week we're gonna go hell for a leather. little hell for leather in mm-hmm. uh planting out. So I've had some like my like I said, I have this whole de- deck uh table that's just been full. So we're going to, that's all going to get in the ground, hopefully. Potatoes are finally going to go in. Yes. I like mine early autumn. <laughs> uh, so those will finally go in. And uh, yeah, I've got so many flowers that are Have just... you still got those potatoes that you, you did in the house? Are they still kicking around? Yes, they are. Oh. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to plant them like a, over, uh, a leggy tomato. I'm going to lay them on their side and let just a little bit of it come up, bury the whole thing, yeah. and just see what the heck happens. Mm-hmm. Got to have a I... little experiment going on, right? So we'll see. And I also stuck one of the things that I cut off the top because they literally were four feet tall. So I cut the tops in half and I put one in the water that I have my um, sweet potato vines rooting in. So I'm going to see if I can just plant it and see what happens. Yeah. Why not? It? I, it's, a, it's part of a potato plant. I don't know. I, this is totally like. I'm Mind, just... I know you can, I've done it with, you know, when you snap off your tomatoes, you know, like the shoot coming out of the, sometimes if I haven't got time, I'll just put them in water and forget them. And there's the roots coming, you know, straight away. So yeah. but I've never heard from. With potatoes that happening, I don't know if that's... yeah, I know. So we're gonna we're gonna see, and it could be a, a complete bust, or it could be kind of oh, that's there interesting. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, Jess, is anything it. else that you're doing busy or? Uh, well, I planted a kiwi this week, oh. which I'm very <laughs> oh, excited about. Out of the very view. tropical <laughs> of you. Yeah, I know. It's a variety called Jenny. Um. So there's a couple of varieties over here. There's an is, Issy, I think it is, which is a small um, kiwi. So they produce proper kiwi fruit, but they're smaller. And you can, and in like bunches, which you can grow over here. But there's the Jenny is like a, a normal size kiwi. Um, but supposedly, and it's self-fertile, and they supposedly do really well over here if you plant them in a good sunny spot. So hmm. quite excited about that. I'm so lost yeah. with kiwi. Then. Is, is this a like an all-round yearly bush that happens? Or is it a tree? Or is it just so like a... It's a vine. A, it's a it's vine. It's a big vine. Right. Um, they are hardy uh, down to about, I think, about minus eight. Oh, um, right. But if it, if it does get like proper cold, I will... Mm-hmm. you know cover it in um just the base just the roots you know cover it in leaf mold and you know a bit of fleece but supposedly like it should be okay mm. and, so, and it's beautiful they've got these really lovely big soft sort of furry, why is it always when just it comes out with something now i'm bloody gonna buy you know what i mean next i'll be getting a bloody <laughs> kiwi fruits delivered to the northeast of england you know what i mean the allotment association are going like what's he doing now <laughs> three bloody potatoes kiwi <laughs> where's his where's his cabbages gone lad <laughs> <laughs> so does it grow just as a like a grapevine like just keep on yeah like a like a vine um, right but quite it, uh, where is a grapevine you have to sort of support it generally and like tie it in and, and prune it you do have to do a lot of pruning on a kiwi 
mainly just because they go huge. Right. So to keep it in check rather than sort of to force it to fruit. Um, but yeah, so I'm growing it up the inside of the fruit cage. So um, I've got one wall is fan trained gooseberries. Right. And I've got a big loganberry covering one wall, a grapevine that goes up and then like around the top of the fruit cage. And then the kiwi is going to go up and like around the middle. So like in a, in a band. Right. I'm going to try and keep it to that sort of that sort of shape. Wow, man! And this is outside all year yeah, round. Yeah, just outside. It's just in um the cage is just made out of you know like those metal mesh things that I use across the beds. Yeah, just made out of them, so it's totally like open to the temperature right. and everything. And when when do the fruit? When when do you expect each year to get the fruit? I think they start fruiting at three years. Um, and this one is supposedly a year old, right? So I've got a bit of time to wait, but I want you know try and get it into a good shape. And where did it, <laughs> where did this idea come from, Jess? Oh, <laughs> uh, I I first saw the Isai one, which is the the miniature. I saw it in a garden centre, and I've told you this before about um, mum won't let you buy things when you're in the garden center. Yes. You know, they said, so I saw this, they had like three really beautiful, healthy looking plants there, you know, and I was like, oh yes, I'm going to get one for me and I'm going to get one for Johanna, my sister. So oh, yes, pick two of them up. Well, what are you going to do with, where are you going to plant that then? I don't, we don't need that. So, and eventually I managed to convince her that I could buy one for Johanna and Johanna could have one. And I put mine back with so much regret as I was putting it back that a couple of days later, so I gave it to Johanna and she's got hers growing. A couple of days later, I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm going back. I need that Kiwi. I can't stop thinking about it. Got there. <laughs> they were all gone, obviously. And I haven't seen one since. Oh, right. So I was devastated. That was about three years ago. I was really, I'm, and I was still thinking about it. And I got this one as a present for Christmas. <laughs> It's like three years later, I'm still whinging about it. So I, it I guess your sister's is now fruiting then. Yes. Right. Yeah, but it's the tiny ones that she's got. Right. Um, and it should, it's flowered, so it should be fruiting like for this, like late August, I think they should late be. Late August, right, yeah, right. Yeah, so very exciting. But I finally got my one, so I'm really, so, really happy. Well, the big question we all want to know, Audrey, I'll come to you as well with this. Okay. Jess, do you eat the kiwi with the skin on or the skin off? I don't feel that that question even needs to be asked. <laughs> Who eats a kiwi skin? Oh, yes. I I've, I've can do it. I didn't used to, but I can. Cut the ends off because they're, like, hard. But yeah. I've, I mean, I would normally have it peeled, but I heard somewhere and I thought, well, you know, I'll try it. Do you know what I mean? And it's a I bit don't like peel it. it's a bit, you know, you can kind of peel it, but it is a little texture of touching cotton wool for me first. You know, that kind yeah. of sends me a little bit like that. Even thinking about the cotton wool, but then it, it was all right. It didn't, you know, it just kind of almost melts in the mouth. So no, I cut them in half. Right, teaspoon. Oh, Scoop you! Oh, yeah. right, right. Like yeah. an avocado. Yeah, yes. like an avocado. Yep. Is that you as well, or is that how you? Oh yeah, it never dawned on me to ever eat a kiwi fruits peel skin. Can't, yeah, <laughs> never, never even I don't dawned know on I'm, me. Maybe someone just like well, get, maybe someone I was in a, having a laugh. Yes, get yeah. the laddie, get the laddie with the skin on. But we you eat we'll... oranges with the skin on. You don't. No, do you? Oh no! no. Okay. <laughs> well, you know they're edible, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, just because it's edible, just because yes. it's horrible, doesn't mean it's not edible. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mind you, when we have like say a fruit salad, though, it's again, it's we peel it. Do you know what I mean we always like peel it? Like because everyone else it? would go, look, they forgot to peel the the kiwi exactly. fruit. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what else did they forget to do? <laughs> I'm not gonna have any of this. Well, you, you just need to actually try the skin on. <laughs> that sounds. I'm not feeling <laughs> I need to, but thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even just the thought of that on my teeth oh, is not. Yes, in the yeah. comments, skin on, skin off. <laughs> See what uh, if it's just me being a bit perverse? You know what I mean? So. <laughs> I would wonder what Locke would say because he's like a kiwi fruit expert. Yes. 
So, so yeah, I think Locke would be skin on, just pulling them off the tree. Eat them like the an end apple. Off and just the whole lot down. You know what I mean? Not well, even. Bless his heart. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Mere swings then. Are we <laughs> are you still are you gonna try it, Jess? I wonder if you if you like can you like polish off the fur a bit? Like it, you, yeah. you don't even you you got you're gonna have to try it, Jess. Just I will. I just will. try it. <laughs> next I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll like, report next week. There you go. I, I'll if you say it's good, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's as bad as what I thought it would be. But See, I don't you do never want to. You never want the scale to be. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, want to say, wanted... "Wow, I was surprised <laughs> by how utterly delicious it was." <laughs> well, it's, it's like it's like eating a hairy apple. There you go. Think of it like. Okay, <laughs> but that also is not <laughs> is horrifying. Is that not helping? No, <laughs> or a hairy yeah. banana. There, that's oh, that's you right. just made okay. Stop talking. <laughs> right. I will never eat fruit again my entire life. <laughs> Harry, but oh, right, right. Audrey, May sowings. What are you sowing in May? Uh, I'm gonna start sowing more lettuce, uh, more chard. Uh, I'm gonna probably try some more flowers just because you know how when flowers get kind of through the heat of summer. They look a bit tired. So I thought, well, I'm just going to have some backups in case mm-hmm. things yeah. Second uh, wave. really don't do well. Because uh, we're having a garden party here at the end of July. So, of course, everything has to be perfect, you know, beyond pristine. Uh, also found out we're hosting a wedding in our garden. So we'll we'll talk about that later. But anyway, a lot of pressure to keep the garden looking really yeah. top notch. Uh, so. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Spring onions I'll do again in May. Um, I'll sow some more beets. I'll sow more salad turnips. Um, anything that I kind of have a quick hankering for, I will. Will you, will you switch off them lights in the back then or not? No. No? Not if there's still (laughs) things growing there. Yeah, no. Uh. Yeah, no, I won't See, do that. See, it's funny because all my now, like, fake garden stuff, lights, heat, everything's off now. It's all, it's all put away yeah. and that's yeah, it. Mine's, mine's, all, mine's just been relegated to studio lighting. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, those will stay on uh, until probably September. Really? Yeah. Depends when I get my last stuff in the garden. Uh, so maybe maybe August. Uh, but then I start sowing some things for inside. Mm-hmm. So, wow. They're you know, a constant, then. I, I like to keep something growing in there all the time. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's nice to walk yeah, no, it, I mean, well, in I the morning and say hello really to well. the little babies and give them a happy birthday when you see them pop up. <laughs> I think it's lovely. So yeah. Do you not? Do you ever get? Oh, well, it sounds like you don't like ever. Because I went when I knocked everything off. It was like, it was almost like a, I've done it. I've crossed the line. I've getting it. I've delivered the babies. Almost. Do you know what I mean? That's it. You know what I mean? They're, they're now fending for themselves. The fliggy the nest. They're away. Yeah. Do you never? It must be a constant mother mother hen with you then <laughs> rearing. There mustn't be a time when you don't. Uh, correct, because I'll switch it over to microgreens as we uh-huh. move into winter. So, and sal- I still grow lettuce inside, which does beautifully. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I, I just like having something growing in here. Hmm. It's also, you know, maybe That's I'll try the easy. cucumbers again. <laughs> One more time. I think part of the thing is, is that I only use the lights as I guess you do as well, Tony, is um, to to get over that first jump where there's mm-hmm. just not enough light outside. And then the moment that there is, everything gets started outside in the greenhouse yeah. or direct in the beds. Like that need to have a space indoors that's got light is just, just vanishes kind of as soon as spring hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it, it, def- it, just, it, it definitely has for me. It's like I say, it's, mm. 
it's there's no need at all. It's just cut, like a, a total yeah. waste. It's now. like I'm still starting stuff all the time. Like things are still being sewn, mm-hmm. but they're just not in the house anymore. They're either in the conservatory or in the in the greenhouse up at the allotment, like where the just using the natural light it's only like a little tiny like two month patch at the beginning where you really struggle and it's we do we struggle loads audrey can you not no i didn't mean that cheekily just like we, <laughs> we struggle you, you do don't you yeah oh, no. struggle. Audrey... No, just even saying speak for yourself tony <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but isn't that the best thing about gardening do you know what i mean it's like sometimes you Jesse mentioned, or, or was it already there? Just charred. My charge just failed miserably. This, I think, it's maybe because I've been away and I didn't keep a good eye on it. My sweet corn's been shocking. I've got about out of. I yeah, don't that know. did look bad. That germination was bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, really? like, I've got to redo. And that's last year it was great. So it's it is this kind of challenge gardening. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Audrey, I was going to say, do you need the lights? Because you've got, you know, surely you can have outside like tables with trees well, and well they can't be in the sun as new little if you're starting them in little modules right they'll be dry within an hour see that I mean, we have like this yeah. super hot sun here right now. i've been burned twice already mm-hmm. and it was on days when it was like uh what about 13 to you Okay, right. and I know I have no pigment, but I have not been burned on days like that. So, uh, yeah, if I don't start them in the ground, then if I'm starting them in any kind of module, I keep them inside. Right. Makes sense. But we're you so know, much less harsh right. here. Like, and it's and not... they get a minute to kind of get their little, you know, true leaves, and then we'll start hardening them off. They'll go in much smaller at that point, but um yeah yeah no i i i kind of baby him at the beginning it's funny i i audio you know when we're kind of chatting here it's almost like we're all next door to each other and so i forget that you are not you know what i mean you are a few miles away and it's, it's just totally different it just you, like i said today's gonna be 27 uh-huh. i couldn't start anything today and feel like oh that's got a shot <laughs> unless i'm standing <laughs> over it with a watering can you know all day Going, you're yeah. going to be fine. We're going to get through this horrible heat. So um, that has just worked better for me to keep them in a little nurturing area for a bit. And then then as they become teenagers, kick them out of the house. Mm-hmm. So, what, yeah. Audrey, I'm just interested to know, what is your preferred garden? And are you, do you like the, just the garden in the, in the heat? Or, you know, because you've only got two. You haven't got a spring, so you can't... Or do you like the gardening in the winter so you can monitor them yourself? Oh, no, I prefer gardening in the spring and fall. I, I'm not a heat lover, and yet right. we live a mile from the sun here during the summer. <laughs> um, I just kind of try to get out as early as I can to just at least just be humid um, and then look at things and then run back into the air-conditioned house. <laughs> That's you know what I mean. It's, 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 I'm struggling even without, like, especially in the polytunnel. You know, lovely days where you can just sit out, but working in in the polytunnel has just been hard this year for me, to be honest. I, you know, I can't imagine. We've been collecting French doors, um, with the glass, like five glass panels. We want to build a greenhouse between our home and our neighbor's home, like in the easement, the utility easement between the two houses, and I'm thinking. I won't be able to go near that uh, after right. like March because it'll be so hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine, but it would look so cute too. So we'll see. It's been particularly hot in our greenhouse here the last couple of days because uh, there's been no wind mm-hmm. or like there's yeah. been a bit of a breeze, but it's been blowing like across and up the allotment. And we've only got like a door at one end and a window you know so yeah. there's no air being pushed through it at all and it's just getting hotter and hotter <laughs> it's yeah it's like an absolute desert in there but it's really hot but and i guess just then you've got to go up every you know once you get plants in that greenhouse and polish it'll be an every day kit you know going up yeah to well, at the, the last couple of days because we've still got um the really young plants in there because i've just done a whole load more sewing Mum's been going up in the morning on her way up 
the hill to the gym because it's like past that way and she opens the greenhouse and then we close it again at night because there's still such a big fluctuation um but yeah it's just too hot to keep keep mm-hmm. the door closed it's, it's like but, 35 oh well yeah it was for me it was just ridiculous will you just then because it comes to a, a point with me where it gets just too hot in a polytunnel throughout the 24 hours so I'll, I'll eventually i'll open the back door just jar it open but then i'll open the front door as well in you know, like say june july and it'll be that kind of they'll be open cut like a, a full 24 hours seven days a week do you ever get to that point where you'll open up everything yeah definitely um the polytunnel <clears throat> I don't ever tend to leave the door up because things go in and nick the tomatoes. Uh, so the main door stays closed, but I've got a window at either side that's um, really quite big and just covered in Enviromesh, so the wind goes straight through it. Right. So you can create a bit of kind of air movement in the with that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a balancing act between... In fact, I was saying this the other day, we've got... Um, I was clearing out a load of stuff that we had stuffed behind the uh, greenhouse and we had an old greenhouse that I kind of kept various bits and pieces from, you know, to use as stakes and stuff. And we've got the old door. It's got no glass in it, but it's the same size as the door we've got on our greenhouse. So I was thinking I might just cover that in EnviroMesh and we can just stick that over the door. Right. So that will stop, you know, mm-hmm. the mice or whatever going in. And Is that what I was going to ask you? What, would, what goes in and pinches your tomatoes? Is it mice, is it? Well, last year, the rats were taking the tomatoes, but we have well, had problems with squirrels going in there. Um, but what's happening in the greenhouse tends to be mice. They just come in and they can run. Actually, something, you know, I had those carrots that I'd sown in October, must have been October. They were looking really fantastic. And I'd put it off a couple of days because I wanted to record picking the carrots and sowing the new ones on the same day. Well, somebody went into the into the greenhouse and just turfed them all out and ate them so we never got them <laughs> right. having been in there for six months but they were i mean they were like they were they were good looking good looking carrots you know never what was left and, of them. and they were all kind of ruined were they yeah just chewed up <sighs> same same whoever it was who took the um tulips <laughs> took all of them and the and the thing and i, was, I did um i said uh, we had one bucket of tulips left and uh, so I set it up. It was a bit, it felt a bit mean, like I was using the tulips as bait, but I set them up with the, with the um, trail cam and nothing, not a sausage. The only thing I saw was my next door neighbor weeing into the compost heap. That was it. So <laughs> hey. nothing. It's like, so is I that don't tra- know what is that trail about. cam. As soon as I put that trail cam out, has they it know. Caught anything? Has it caught anything since, Jess? Nothing. All I've caught on that trail cam is mum. My next door neighbour, a couple of magpies and a rat. So <laughs> that's it. Man. That is it. I've got here a companion planting because I've decided this year I'm being very frugal with what I put in. So I've been putting in, like, say, red cabbages today. <clears throat> in, in most of my beds, or these beds I've put in, I'm only putting in four red cabbages so it's possibly like a six foot bed by maybe two foot, and there's only four cabbages. Because I remember, and it was, you know, Ben from the Grow Veg, you know, when you get the app and you download it and you put it, they were, you know, I was way over planting. So this year I'm thinking, because if you get, say, 10 cabbages, what are you going to do with 10 red cabbages all at once? That's you know what true. I mean? So it's not such a big kind of, oh, you're not getting much veg. It'll just if I can kind of succession so or whatever. What could what would you say, Audrey, then, is, is a good companion plant, like an all-rounder, so you can just shove it anywhere? Would you, is it lettuce? Is it just flowers? Is it is it anything? Uh, for cabbage? Well, it doesn't even have to be cabbage. Uh, what, what, you know, anything, really. What? Uh, one of the things I'll stick in wherever I can find room is an onion <coughs> or, or uh, spring onions. Right. Because I just feel like that smell of an onion keeps a lot of things away that just don't like that that scent. Um, I also stick lettuce almost everywhere that there's a little hole. Um, yeah, those those are two of my go tos. Or I will plant basil or uh, 
Is that Mr. Basil? Chip. Is it? Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that 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 dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh, yeah, so I'll throw throw herbs in too. Oh my gosh, here we yeah, go. I don't, I don't okay. even know what you, I don't even know what they are, Ori. I've never even well, heard of them try herbs to, before. Try to be bilingual, okay? <laughs> As long uh, as you get your temperatures right, I'll, I'll forgive you for the herbs. You know I, I, mean? I Just... work really hard at knowing my Celsius numbers. So, <laughs> Jess, what's your favorite like companion planting? Do you do companion planting? I mean, companion planting in terms of like fending off bugs and pests and stuff, a um, bit more specialized. But if you're just trying to use up the space between, like if you're because when you look at how far apart you're supposed to plant these things, oh, it, yeah. yeah, it's really like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, spring onions is always a really good one. I guess that they must have that effect because they're so scented, right? Um, but yeah, anything that that's quick growing that's going to be out the way by the time those cabbages like start taking up the space. So yeah, radishes, lettuces, mm -hmm. uh, pak choy and stuff is a good one because they like the shade of the bigger plants later on once they've got a bit bigger. Um, yeah, anything that's just really quick, really. Or mizuna, stuff like that, or cress. Um, yeah, any of those kind of things, just to use the space. Because when you plant them out and the plants are only this big and you put like four foot between them, <laughs> it oh, really feels like a waste, it, doesn't it? It does. I mean, I've, like I say, I've done it today and you kind of look and it looks like, aesthetically pleasing but you're thinking there's so much soil area not there yeah. but you know it's I... going to take them months to get to get you know to fill up any kind of mm -hmm. space isn't it so you just well, use it's... the rest of the bed as you would i suppose yes. well it's an, and jess it's going to be one of them things especially like brassicas do you mean it they're a bugger to get over the finishing line do you mean there's so many caterpillars <laughs> pigeons slugs snails <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Cabbage root fly, there's so many. Everything is after them. You know what I mean? They're the kind of the one thing that you've almost got to sit on with a 12 bore shotgun, yeah. just waiting for something to. So, to pop. thinking about that, actually, it's probably worth being careful not to sow anything brassica y like turnips or whatever between them. Mm -hmm. Keep it, keep it non brassica because you'd just be sucking in the, you know. It's, a, it's, it's almost like a like a, smells to yeah, all the things like that extra. are also going to attack your cabbages. It's almost like there's a rave going on on, on yeah. bed number five. Let's exactly. So no, <laughs> no leaf mustard, no um, turnips, nothing. And that if you stayed away from that, it's probably a good. Well, good at the moment, it's just I've just put them in, and it's it's quite an unusual. Well, it's definitely for me. I've never done this. You know, I would normally probably maybe try and get in eight where I've got four at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Jess, is that are you a, a crammer in her or are you a spacious gardener? Oh yeah, it depends. Uh I tend to do I've got it down now when I'm growing the brassicas, so like not so much cabbages. I'd never have a great deal of luck with cabbages or like the lower growing ones, but things like say Cavalanero or a purple sprouting broccoli or a Brussels sprout or something, I tend to know that I can get three across a bed. So the beds are one meter 20. And if I plant three across them, I know they've got decent ish uh -huh. spacing. So I can sort of, it's a bit of a push, but I can get nine tall brassicas in a half a bed, like in a block. Right. Um, cabbages, I, cabbages, I guess it would have to just be two like you're doing. Just two and two, yeah, mm -hmm. probably. But did you say your bed was six, eight foot? Six well, foot? I've, I've got different sizes. Just the ones I'm using now yeah. are actually are the ones that I've got the, the frame on where the beans will go eventually, but I'll just have to squash the beans in along the sides where the frame is. It's just, it's something new to me. Do you know what I mean? Just being mm -hmm. really precise with me measurements and just like, yeah. for, you know, because I'm standing back thinking, and I've got like another, say, six or seven great looking plants. Do you know what I mean? Ready to kind of rock and that roll and hurts, put straight back. It? Oh, what do you do? What do I yeah. do? Do you know what I mean? And the beetroot, and I physically <laughs> thought I'm going to do this. So I, I planted my beetroot today. Then I, I had about, say, six left. And I thought, normally I would just like put them in somewhere. Do you know what I mean? But I thought, I'm just going to, I'm just going to ignore them. I'm just going to leave them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not even going to put them in. Do you know what I mean? I'll probably run back up to that. How did that feel? <laughs> oh, it's not horrible. It's horrible. Don't, don't recommend it. Because it's 
<laughs> oh, I'll just shove one in there as I'm passing. I'll just put one in there as I'm passing. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if this is. No, a... you could plant those in with your cabbage. Oh, yeah. Because they'll be they're out in what yes. 50, 55 days. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be a good use of that extra mm-hmm. space. I do I do tend to put things like that. I find that really difficult as well when you've got like six really good looking plants and only only sensible space for four. Mm-hmm. I do tend to find that you oh magically one's appeared in the flower bed, you know, because I just can't <laughs> not put it in. So it goes would in. Would you somewhere. always Jess, would you always plant it or would you would you ever think you know a healthy two healthy plants i've got them in i'll just put these in a compost no i mean if i'm being really honest if i don't put them in immediately ten generally what i'll do is i'll say well i'll put them back in the greenhouse and then and i'll just dry if any one of these fail or whatever <laughs> i'll be able to think but inevitably they just suffer in a pot that's too small for them and they end up going in the compost heap Mm -hmm. unless I've got somebody to give them to like if I've got excess I do tend to just ask around and that feels great like there's no problem there (laughs) but yeah if they do go in there and then just suffer which is even worse yeah that's just you've hit the nail on the head they do you end up on or I'll leave them next to the bed that, yeah. you know what I mean like in the tree and then I come so back so they can and... watch their friends growing away happily having a really wonderful life and they can just sit there and stuff yeah. Yeah. Good, good like <laughs> <laughs> Audrey I, 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 brassicas are we are we big over there on in, in Detroit with brassicas with cabbages or anything or is it something that's well this year I have I think a bulletproof cover over my broccoli right now which appears to be doing really well Right. So we we shall see. It's I might have metal. Broke... Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, on the first question, I'm a crammer inner. Right. Uh, so for me, the cabbage, I would just pull some of them really small, and I'm fine with that. And then give the other ones room. If I can get get a cabbage that isn't eaten to death by the cabbage. Oh, that's the worm. that's the. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going down that route to even right. to get them across so the, I, the I finish. Think, I think this, <laughs> and I have some cabbage and some kale going. I have another, about another set of hoops for a different thing. We'll see if that works. But I find you have to get those hoops up the day you put them in. Mm-hmm. 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 Like there's no, there's no, uh, oh, we'll get to that next week. Nope, they're already half dead by then. Yeah. Well, I've even had pigeons come into the polytunnel and peck the cabbages that are in the trees, you know. So, and the big fat birds now, you know what I mean? They're not well, starving, why, it's not cold. that's why, because they're going in everybody's poly uh, eating mm-hmm. their stuff. Yeah, they're oh. they're not a, a handsome bird. <laughs> I remember seeing those in London, and I was like, and they're like, they have no fear. Oh, no. They're like, they're like if you're no. eating, they're like, that's mine too. So, yeah, that, that's my big memory of that is like, wow, they are unpleasant looking and very <laughs> aggressive listen it is top of the hour already Ooh, no. there we go wow. man man what very can i say quick. audrey big thank you big thank you for coming oh, where can we here. find you audrey well one, i want to say one thing before i tell you that i have a video coming out right after this mm-hmm. say i guess that would be well whenever this is over uh about it's eight uh, o'clock it, tonight, it, Audrey. So just go straight over to Audrey's channel. It's it's a a little tribute to Steve, <gasps> and I'm showing something that used to be in his garden that is now in my garden. Oh, so give us a little it's, give give us a little a little taste. Is it something physical that you've got? Or is it yes. So, all right. It's a sign that he had uh, on one of his. A little garden things, and right. we have now built one, and it has the same sign on it, and it comes right yeah. from. Anne was kind enough to let uh, JB take it and mail it to me. Wow! Um, so, so, and a nice little tribute. We'll show how Steve built his, mm-hmm. or at least reference the um, the video. Mine, I still so, think about every time I step into my allotment. I'm still thinking about him. Do you know what I mean? It's just oh, like he's I there, like as a guide. Time. I and he's sometimes there as a more. nag as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I, <laughs> I popped in these cabbages to deer and I thought, I'm going to give them a little bit of a seaweed feed just to like, and Steve would be like, whoa, 
oh, well, don't don't molly color and let them bloody fight for it. You know, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, you probably heard that side of Steve more than I did. <laughs> I heard, I heard more of the encouraging side. But anyway, uh, I even go back and and watch his videos sometimes right. when I'm doing something. I'm like, he was just a wealth of knowledge. Oh God, I, I. So anyway, that's coming out today. So you can find me at um, Real Food Comes Dirty on YouTube, Instagram, and dot com. There you go. Audrey, thank you very much. Thank you, Jess. Where can we find you? Plot thirty seven, plot thirty seven dot com, or plot thirty seven on Instagram, or Jesse on plot thirty seven <laughs> on YouTube. I and know, within very two, original within name. two weeks, we will have a Bill Polly tunnel. Yeah, in it. Well, I'm no, sort of regretting no. <laughs> yeah. giving myself a timeline then, but. Yeah. No, no, no. JB will also, be back next week, and then the week after, I'll I'll get some drinks. I'll get some organisation. We'll get some more cans, and we'll have a. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, you'll <laughs> love it. You just show me the pictures of the completed polyton. That's all you've got yeah. to do. <laughs> right. So, are you volunteering to go down and help, Tony? <laughs> I was going to say, are you bringing right. the beers, Tony? Because that's, that, that's what I hear that. you saying. You're coming down to help. <laughs> What a nice collab that would be. That would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> actually, next week, is it the week after or something? Bristol. So, well, actually, still miles away, Jess. So, anyway. Listen, big thank you, everyone. Jess, Audrey, thank you so much. JB's back week. next week. So, we'll see him. We'll have a chat with JB. Look after yourselves. Take good care. Bye bye. <laughs>